Hi all, David Wiley here. David asked me to take a few minutes and talk about something I see happening in the open education space right now. What I see happening in the open education space right now that I think is interesting is what I've come to call the access compromise. Uh, years ago, there was a time when books were so expensive that people couldn't afford to own them. And so the solution to this problem uh, came to be getting lots of books and bringing them together in a library where if people couldn't own them, at least they could have access to them. And this compromise was struck because books were simply too expensive to afford. Uh, now, over time, books became cheaper and cheaper, and nowadays people own lots of books, except in the context of universities and college. Those books have become so expensive now that our schools are asking uh, students to make the access compromise all over again. Uh, our schools have instituted buyback programs, they've instituted textbook rental programs, uh, uh, they encourage students to subscribe to digital uh, books that expire after six months. And our college's affordability initiatives have essentially boiled down to telling students, we can make uh, your textbooks more affordable if you'll trade less access to them, if you'll give them all back at the end of term and never refer back to them, never study them again, never think about them again. I think that's problematic. Well, that's formal education. But I think open education has fallen prey to the same type of thinking as well. In all of the definitions of open educational resources that you'll see or read, uh, they each include some component of free and unfettered access to materials. Uh, and it seems like without knowing it, open education has fallen in to this trap of thinking about access instead of thinking about ownership. And so this is a point that I've been thinking about a lot lately and something I'd like to raise to uh, people's attention around and create some dialogue around. It's been about seven years since I first proposed the four R's framework for thinking about the bundle of rights that we get with open educational resources, uh, the rights to reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. But I've recently uh, come to believe because of this access compromise and the fact that we seem to have fallen into it without being particularly thoughtful, that we need a fifth R, and that fifth R would be retain, the right to make, own, and control copies. Uh, a lot of open educational resource initiatives seem to be happy to publish resources, but at the same time seem to go out of their way to make it difficult for people to actually own copies of them. Uh, somehow they want everyone to use those resources for free, but to only access them via their website. So I'd just like to propose uh, to you that you take some time and think about the difference between having access to something and owning something, uh, owning it permanently and having control over it. And as you think about open educational resources, think about instead of just providing access, providing opportunities for people to own copies of open educational resources and see how that changes your thinking about the movement in general and the specific project that you work on. Thanks very much and I hope you're having a great event. Bye.